Good day grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in week 4. In this lesson we're going to be talking about inertia. Now in our last lesson we spoke about Newton's first law and correctly stated Newton's first law says that an object continues in a state of rest or uniform velocity or motion unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced force. So why am I telling you this? Well, inertia is basically if we read it carefully, the property of matter which maintains an object state of rest or its motion in a straight line is called inertia. So basically inertia is a property of matter which demonstrates Newton's first law. Okay, so in fact, Newton's first law used to be called Newton's first law of inertia, not of motion, but they've subsequently changed it. So inertia is basically the physical property of matter that obeys Newton's first law. We can say that inertia of an object is the tendency of the object to resist a change in its state of rest or of constant motion. Okay? In other words, object basically resists any type of change, either if it's so it's staying stationary, it wants to stay stationary, and if it's going at a constant velocity, it wants to carry on at going on at a constant velocity. And, er and inertia is dependent on the mass of the object. The heavier the object is, then obviously the more difficult it is to change it because we have to have a bigger resultant or unbalanced force acting on it. So let's look at some examples of inertia. So here you can see a ring with another thing above it and you will see that the gentleman, same thing here, is pulling this part fast and what happens And this falls directly into it. Yeah, he's got a penny and he's got a piece of paper. Now what is actually happening is that as he pulls the piece of paper, the coin is stationary because he has pulled the paper across very quickly, he has basically overcome the coin's inertia and the coin remains stationary, it just falls down, whereas the piece of paper moves forward. Okay, what should happen next? Now he's got a beaker and it's got some mass. Now remember I said to you inertia, the greater the inertia the harder it is to move. So what he's going to do is he's going to move this piece of paper fast. Watch how very little this beaker moves. Right now, less mass, and he's finally going to do it with an empty glass. And notice that the beaker moves quite a bit. Okay, here's another example of inertia. Okay, quite impressive. Now, watch what happens to the books on this chair. Do you see that the books keep on moving forward as the chair bumps into the rolling chair bumps into the stationary chair? That's because the books have got a continuous movement. The force that they're feeling, well, they're not even feeling force. They were moving forward, right? So they were moving forward. They're not being held down as part of the rolling chair. They were actually on top of it, just stationary. So when the chair stops underneath them, they continue with a continuous movement a movement and they can move forward. Let's just watch that again just a little bit. Okay, let me go back. Right, now watch. They are going to carry on moving forward, okay? And that's effectively what happens to us. Okay, and the final example. Right, so that was quite a cute example. Just shows that you can get it to fall straight down. Now, the whole reason that inertia is important is because it is applicable to us in everyday life. And now I'm going to show you a little video which tells you exactly why we should wear a seat belt every time we get into the car. The law of inertia states that objects will maintain their state of motion unless acted on by an outside force. This means that moving objects will stay moving and still objects will stay still unless you push or pull on them. There are two safety devices in your car to protect you from the effects of inertia. The first is your seat belt. When the front end of your car rams another object, your car will suddenly stop or slow down. Because of inertia, your body will want to stay moving at whatever speed it was moving before the accident. If you're not wearing a seat belt, this means you will hit a windshield. 
The seat belt provides, provides a force to stop your body's forward motion. The second safety device in your car is a headrest. When your car is hit from behind, the car is suddenly pushed forward. Your head will want to stay still, but your body will be pushed forward by the seat. This causes your head to feel like it is snapping back. Your head is actually staying still because of inertia, while the rest of your body is being pushed. Your headrest pushes your head forward with your body so that you don't suffer from whiplash. Look at the difference between a headrest that is properly set versus one that is set too low to push your still head forward. Right, and that is why you should always use your seat belt when you're in a car. We're also these days of airbags, and when we talk about momentum and impulse, I'll teach you about airbags and how they also help you to survive an accident. So what do we know? We know that inertia is a body's resistance to change in its motion. If it's stationary, it wants to stay stationary. If it's moving, it wants to carry on moving in that direction. Okay, unless there's an unbalanced force that acts on it. So basically, it is the visible application of Newton's first law. Have a great day, grade 11s.